outstanding. We're very proud of our next guest. He's, uh, I think this is his 1,820,000th time on the show because we love Tim Harrison and we love the work he does regarding animals. So please make welcome for I don't know how many times, our buddy, Tim Harrison, right there. Hey, Check Tim, show. Shoot this uh, thing right here. That Ron. That's my group over there in uh, Virginia. They rescue large animals. Cool. And don't, they, move, don't move. You got it? Guys you got it? it? You got it? It says on there, we, cool. we train to save your ass. That's what it All says, right. always with horses, donkeys. <laughs> How you been? Oh, just busy, traveling around. And I know, every time I call, uh, I Tim's in China. Uh, hello, is Tim there? <laughs> no, he's over in uh, Afghanistan. Is Tim in to this week? No, he's down in South America. You travel all over the world. It depends on the Homeland Security stuff. I'm with yeah. the animal stuff. It depends on where I'm at. Yeah. Well, now you want to go to this, watch some pictures. You want to go. To oh, that, yeah. Let's right go to that because I got a little stuff in here. I think, Ron, you might want to go full start screen. Off, right off the bat, we, a lot of people ask me about Harambe. The, uh, the African gorilla was shot down in uh, uh, down Cincinnati Zoo. And people are saying, why don't you dart this animal? Why don't you dart this animal? This happened the same time Harambe was. We had a 50-pound patus monkey with the world's longest canines, the world's fastest primate over in Indiana. I darted this animal. If you want to go to the next picture real quick, that's Dr. Paul Stahl with me, deputy vet for the state of Ohio. We darted this guy, so we had to do medical procedures on him because he potentially had cancer. Go to the next video or picture, next picture. That's where we're actually taking a uh, part of the uh, tissue out so we can do his samples. We have a quick video here showing you when you dart an animal. We darted this animal with enough stuff, to, about my size, 200-pound man, and this patus monkey did not go down. He did not go down. Is that so when normal? people start, well, it's an adrenaline rush that's oh. going on. And that's what happens with the gorilla, too, in that situation. If you're going to dart an animal that size, it may not go down. You may not even be guessing at the body weight. So a drug could take 12 to 15, 20 minutes so for it to go down. Don't be in a hurry to run over there. Right? No, it's not going to work that way. Okay. We're not probably not going to get to see the video. But uh, we can go to the next picture then with this. But always remember with Harambe, Harambe actually in Swahili means to uh, out, war cry, actually go out and have a war cry. So we want to tell everybody to get together. Let's not have this happen again where a boy falls in with a gorilla. Because yeah. we have a disrespect in the United States of America, and that's what my organization, Outreach for Animals, is. Police officers, firefighters, paramedics, emergency room doctors, pediatric physicians, and veterinarians from around the country now, we teach proper behavior around wildlife. Right. And we need it more now than ever, because with uh, the boy falling in with the uh, gorilla, he just saw Sad. the movie The Jungle Book two days before that, he told the firefighters. Yeah. So he wanted to get in with the animals because he saw it on The Jungle Book. This is an alligator we took out of a basement in, uh, in, in Hubert Heights, Ohio. That's at the Ohio Division of Agriculture's building. And what happened was is that we got this alligator out. So we had 29 alligators that year. But people were talking about going down to Florida and places where these alligators are at. And the one little boy from Nebraska was killed by the alligator because the father put him out in the water and he's splashing in the water at nighttime when the predators are out. Now, Walt Disney, the group there, Disney World, knew that there was an alligator problem because their own employees were feeding the alligators. So you don't get it close to any bodies of water. And patrons were telling and complaining about oh, it. complaining about yeah. it like crazy. And the sad part about it was anytime an animal relates human beings with food, they're going to continually well, come yeah. up to these people. And what's a little baby look like splashing in the water? There Those alligators go. have sensitive sides on their faces, and they will follow up to that child and, and go for that child, yeah. not knowing it's a you know, human yeah. being's child. So it's up to us as parents, and that's why I'm telling people right now, as I said on national radio shows here recently, I said, I want you to understand, I said, I want you to listen to me, parents, school teachers, TV personalities out there that are supposed to be wildlife. Nobody's teaching proper education around wildlife. Nobody's teaching proper behavior. So next picture, just appeared in Time Magazine for Kids. This is uh, Boo Boo the Bear. Uh, Boo Boo was one of the bear. This actual picture was taken by Vince Musi. It also appeared in the National Geographic article. It was about me in 2014. That's Boo Boo the Bear. If you go to the next one, it's called Wild Things. And you can see we had a question up inside. There's myself with another alligator. And they told a story about what I do and what goes on out here. And we asked kids. We just asked kids. And there's like millions of kids that get this uh, Time magazine for kids across the school systems across the country in North America. And what do you think about people owning wild animals? Just 10 years ago, Kids would go, I want a monkey, I want this, I want that. I was amazed. Hundreds of thousands of them agreed with us. We don't need these animals. No. Leave them in the wild. So I'm pretty amazed at what's going on. We got the video. Oh, you got a video? Let's go ahead and hit one of the videos in. Yeah, this is, uh, we had to actually go in with the Pattis monkey after I darted it, and it's still moving. And you can imagine if you dart, I dart a lot of primates, I dart a lot of bears, a lot of tigers, and they don't go down like people think they do in the movies. It takes time. I'm going to have to go in and dog snare this guy. What was the weight again of the monkey? 50 pounds, 50. and has the world's longest go. canines. And you're going to see him coming around moving, and that's after he was given enough ketamine and rampoon to knock myself down. 
he was still fighting. So you can imagine if you're dealing with a large primate like a gorilla, people say, and a lot of people really got mad at me on, on radio shows saying, oh, they should be able to dart these animals. You can't dart them like you see in TV movies. So we had to hold him down and, re and inject some more into him. And we also gave him four grapes full of Valium too, and it still didn't knock him down. Because when they get that adrenaline rush, as you heard, that you know that starts running in the body, becomes very dangerous. And I have to agree with what the uh, Cincinnati Zoo had to do, with, uh, oh, yeah. because it was one of the situations. I don't know if you know the whole story. The gorilla actually pushed the baby's head underwater. If you want to go to the next one here, I think we got it up here. It's the. Uh, this is something I want to tell everybody right now in the state of Ohio. I've had, I'm right now 30 calls for snapping turtles to people's backyards. I've had a bunch of black rat snake calls. I usually don't go out on every one of them, but I try to get out there. This is a snapping turtle. I'm taking some out of somebody's window well in Springboro after they called the police. And this is, people watch that show, uh, Turtle Man, and all these snapping turtles are supposed to be monsters. Everybody says, Tim, you make it look too easy. These animals don't want to hurt you. They don't want, they're the only if they're scared will they do it. He snapped a little bit there because I was tapping him on the back. But this is a typical story. Please understand what's in your neighborhood. My first book was a best-selling book called Wild Times, Tales from Suburban Safaris. It came out in 2001. And we actually had a joking thing, a chapter in there, where people were going, buying homes, you know, where it says deer run, you know, or deer estates. And then the deers were walking through their backyards. They wanted to know what was going on. I said, we should change the names of them to accountant estates. You know, lawyer's way, right? Because that's what the new people moving into that migrationary path is. So we got to understand, leave these animals alone. And if it does come a situation, please don't kill them. A lot of people have been killing them because they think they're monsters. Yeah. They watch those Animal Planet shows where snapping turtles have to wrestle them, you know, and they're monsters. Please understand they're just creatures that need to be on the very important creatures they have, too. We actually used them in, in the south for uh, hunting for bodies in the oceans, in the, I mean, in, in rivers. Wow. They can take them out, and a snapping turtle will have a, uh, a drill through a hole, its hole with a, a string tied to it, and they'll swim right down to where the dead body is. They can find it easier with a snapping turtle than they can with anything else. Wow. One last uh, thing up here. I had a pleasure of being uh, one of the keynote speakers, one of the main individuals to the Wildlife and Crisis International Think Tank in Costa Rica just a few months ago. And it had everybody from all over the world came in. The only people who weren't there is like, you know, Jane Goodall wasn't there, but some other, all the major people, were, all the players came in. We came into uh, Costa Rica to start thinking what we can do with wildlife and crisis. Sadly, my story was to show them videotapes of all the stuff that came from our documentary, The Elephant in mm -hmm. the Living Room, also the undercover footage of auctions here in the state of Ohio, of all places, where they're selling sloths. They're selling them, and the people in Costa Rica were freaking out. They have them just stacked on top of each other, as you saw, and they're selling sloths to anybody who wants to buy one. And they don't live very long, and they're very, you know, very sad animals once you yeah. get them as a pet. And this think tank got me to wake up a little bit, too, because they were talking about in third world nations where they're still having monkey jockeys, where they take monkeys, pull their teeth, put them on the back of dogs and have them run like little jockey shows. Well, guess what? When I came back from Costa Rica, guess what happened at the Warren County Fair just last week? They had monkey jockeys at the Warren County Fair. I was stunned. I had to take little videotapes and send it back to the organizations that were all from Norway, England, everybody else. So you're not going to believe this. This clown is actually taking the show on the road to all the fairs in the area. And I asked him, I stood my hand up and asked him, I said, come the monkeys don't have any teeth. Well, uh, they were, they were uh, uh, you know, convenience animals, worked with people that were, you know, you know, blind or whatever it was. I said, so they're retired? Yeah. So when you retire this animal, you put it on the back of a dog and run it. So you got two animals <laughs> being harassed, a dog and a, and a monkey. So, well, well, well. And he goes, you might have to leave, sir. We don't need you there. Well, I took about half of the people there getting their pictures taken with the monkeys with their kids left with me. Because I tell them, anytime you have to pull an animal's teeth to make it a pet, yeah. that's wrong. Anytime you surgically alter any of these animals, like tigers for the Jay Leno show and shows like that, anytime you alter an animal the way it is, it makes it hard for me to find a place for them to go, as you know, by yeah. 21 sanctuaries. They yeah. can't take surgically altered animals and put them in with another tiger that's got claws or another monkey that's got teeth sure. because they're going to kill it. Yeah. So when every time you think this is good for your animal, for your kids to get their picture taken, just remember, I just came back from my world summit with the world's best people saying this only happens in third world. No, it happens in happens Ohio. Here. So I hate to say uh, we're, we're not doing very well here. I couldn't believe that one video you showed parents buying poisonous snakes oh, for oh, their yeah. kids. Mm -hmm. That just you get that undercover video thing. Now you see, now you see, Rob, why we have all the emergency room doctors. Yeah. We have all the pediatric physicians now on our side. When I spoke, I didn't get a chance to bring the footage, but I did two congressional briefings in the last four months in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And we brought in emergency room doctors. We did videotapes of them called coming in. And they all had stories about kids being hurt or injured by yeah. big cats in homes or by a, a python or something of that nature. And uh, people are like stunned that this is going on. It's going on on a regular basis. 
And the thing is, is there's no place for an emergency room doctor or a pediatric physician to mark on any of his paperwork that this boy was attacked by a snake. Yeah. But if you get your scratched by a house cat, by your own house cat, you got That's three there. inches of paperwork to go through and you get quarantined a cat. But if it was a lion, nobody cares. There's no place to put a box down that this happens. So how do you keep statistics on that? Remember I caught that 80 pound cougar right on Xenia Avenue. Yeah. And that's like a, 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 a house cat multiplied by 100. And people don't realize that I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. It's not, I'm not making money off this. I don't want to do this anymore. And that's why my organizations, always cops are the first ones on the scene. Always. A woman gets her face ripped off by a chimpanzee yeah. in Connecticut. It's the cops. It ain't the zoo. Yeah. If a, an animal gets loose, a tiger gets loose at the San Francisco Zoo, what do they do? They hid in a cafeteria and called 911 and two cops came off the street and had to kill that tiger. They yeah. killed the boy and seriously injured too. We can't have this because yeah. there's no training for them for that. And we have enough problems as it is right now as police officers in this country to have to worry about big cats and people's that's homes. That's why we keep having you back to keep us updated because yeah. America depends on you yeah, we and, have your, to, and your staff. And sadly it is, it has to be the cops that yeah. can step up. It's not these big organizations. I've learned that it has to be the people that are on the front line. And God bless our cops, cops and military and police and firefighters. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for Rob. coming, Tim.